Hello my dear friends, you're on the Military Summary channel. In this short video we're going to discuss the most important events that took place during the previous night of the local time. And first we're going to start with uh, Bakhmut, Artyomov's direction. If you remember yesterday we discussed that the Russians launched offensive operation in direction of the village by the name of Vasyukovka and as a result of that attack the Russians managed to establish control of the entire settlement. Yet we haven't received any geolocation from a village but we have some geolocations that took place around the village, around the settlement. On this video we can see how the Russian armored vehicles were attacking the Ukrainian forces in this in that area, trying to surprise them and pin them down. Furthermore, a few seconds later, the Russians using multi-launch rocket system were bombing this area as well. Yet, uh, one more time, we haven't received even a single geolocation that the Russians entered this territory, but according to some sources, the main purpose of those attacks, of those bombings, was not to capture this territory, but to secure the flanks, secure these flanks, to pin down the Ukrainians, and to attack uh, this area to the north in the direction of Sakovan city. And according to some sources, the Russians during the previous days managed to restore control over the positions that they lost during the battles that took place in August. August and July. I'll remind you that in August and July 2023, the Ukrainians launched a very powerful counter-offensive, trying to prepare foothold for further Solidar offensive operation, and as a result of that attack, the Ukrainians returned control over this area. But now the Russians managed to return every single square meter back. I'm not saying that, um, that Vasikovka, to be more precise, the eastern part of this village is not under Russian control, but we will keep this territory as a grey zone. Now we are moving further to the south in direction of Zalizyansk Areha Vasilivka. The Ukrainians launched a very powerful offensive operation recently these days, and as a result of that attack, the Ukrainian offensive operation was repelled. The Ukrainians were completely defeated. They had a lot of losses among armored vehicles and uh, soldiers. During the day, that day, the Ukrainians tried to evacuate the personnel, but the Russians controlled the situation. As a result of artillery strike, the Russians destroyed either uh, Ukrainian uh, soldiers and uh, Ukrainian armored vehicle evacuation machine. So that attack was repelled, there are no risk for the Russians on the northern flank. When talking about central part of this area, according to information we have, the Russians launched an expected offensive operation from Bakhmut in direction of Ivanovska. That was a very powerful and strong attack that the Russians tried to continue now. And this information was provided us uh, by a deep state UA map. You know, I believe you're familiar with this map. This is the Western uh, sources map, Ukrainian sources map that always try to give information in Ukrainian favor. So if they're saying that the Russians launch attack in direction of Ivanovska, so that means that probably the situation in this area is very critical for the Ukrainians. Yet we haven't received any updates regarding like territory achievements and so on. But as I understand the main purpose of attack in direction of Ivanovska to force the Ukrainians to stop or at least to slow down the Ukrainians in the area between Klishevka, Andreevka, Kordyumovka, Zelenopolya. When talking about this area, we got also a lot of very interesting updates and geolocations. Today we have the video of how the Russian soldiers managed to discover the movement of Ukrainian forces in the three lines on the Russian side of the railways. In a few seconds later, the Russians started bombing this area and Ukrainian soldiers with mortar systems. And as a result of those attacks, the Ukrainian reconnaissance teams were destroyed. So, uh, based on that video, we can make a conclusion that Ukrainians were moving from these uh, three lines uh, on the Russian side of ra the railways. They were moving along these three line and somewhere at this point they were bombed by the Russian mortars and artillery systems. And as a result of those strikes, those Ukrainians were basically wounded or killed. I, I can't say whether this territory is under complete Ukraine control, but as I understand, at least this territory is in the gray zone. So we will keep this area as is. Uh, also, very interesting updates are coming from south in direction. Uh, some Western sources reported that uh, the Russians also launched offensive operation from Kurdumovka to the north, and as a result of that attack, the Russians managed to establish control or at least to improve their positions. But uh, uh, we got one geolocated video from this area and that video was about the Ukrainian tanks. On this video we can see how the Russians discovered the Ukrainian evacuation machine who was trying to evacuate the abandoned Ukrainian tank on the north of Kurdyumovka and the Russians started bombing and shelling this territory heavily and as a result of those bombardments the Ukrainians lost two armored vehicles. So basically 
Uh, according to these locations, there were no offensive from the Russian side in this area, but uh, we can say that the Ukrainians managed to improve their positions, and at least currently the Ukrainians controls uh, the let's say the edge tree line that located on the north of Kurdumovka. So basically, the situation is not very good for the Russians. Currently, the Ukrainians uh, are not able to improve their offensive operation, their positions, because it's a very short uh, like corridor to attack, but uh, the Ukrainians are doing these attempts. I don't think the Ukrainians will uh, achieve any results, because currently we see a very powerful pressure against the Ukrainian positions on the north, and now the Ukrainians need to redeploy some forces and to slow down and to stop the Russian progress on the line between Areha Vasilevka, Zelizyansk, Novosikovka and also in direction of Ivanovka, Ivanovska. Now we're moving further to Avdiivka direction. We got a lot of updates from this territory. The Russians continue bombing the Ukrainian fortifications, shelters and strongholds on the southern part. We got the geolocation and the photo of fire anomaly in this area. We see a very big territory uh, under Ukrainian control is under very heavy fire, which means that the Russians are bombing this territory 24 hours, 7 days a week with purpose to force the Ukrainians to, st to step back to reduce their manpower and so on. So this is something like artillery preparation before next and further offensive of the Russian forces. When talking about northern direction, we got a lot of updates from this territory. A lot of mappers have already updated their map showing that this part of the railways are under Russian control. Uh, I'm not going to update the map because yet we haven't received even a single geolocated video confirmation that the Russians managed to enter this true line. For example, the mapper like Syriac was already updated. He shows that this territory is under Russian control. Also, this territory was updated according to the Deep State UA map. But one more time, for now, I'm not going to update this map because uh, I want to see a real geolocation. Furthermore, we got some very interesting geolocations uh, that uh, shows that maybe there are no progress from the Russian side. For example, on this video, we see uh, the results of Ukrainian counter-offensive operation. The Ukrainians crossed the railways and the Ukrainians were trying to attack the Russians and they were trying to force the Russians to step back. Uh, uh, from the recently gained positions and for those purposes the Ukrainians used tanks and those tanks were located exactly in the history line but all those tanks were destroyed as a result of Russian FPV drone strikes. Uh, very difficult of course uh, to, uh, to determine to understand when exactly this video took place but the sources are saying that these events took place on the 23rd and the 24th of October. So the, bat so the Russians were bombing the Ukrainian forces with FPV drones in this area which confirms that the Ukrainians still have some control or at least these territories in the gray zone. Furthermore, we have the video of Ukrainian Bradleys who were attacking the Russians in Krasnogorovka. As we know, the Bradley uh, is type of weapon that we can find uh, as uh, equipment of 47s, uh, mechanized brigade and many many other brigades from strategical reserves. The sources, the sources confirms that Ukrainians have redeployed the 47s brigade in this area. According to some four sources, this, these events, those events took place on the 20th of, August, of October. So one more time, very difficult to understand the real, the real combat line. But uh, as for, for as for military summary, we will keep this territory in gray zone until we get more uh, stronger stronger proofs. The Ukrainians also published the video of FPV drone strikes against the Russian infantry who was moving in the vicinity of the uh, of this hill. So in this video, we see that the Russians do have possibilities to move their soldiers without being attacked from the Ukrainian forces. Maybe we can use this uh, like geolocations from the Ukrainian side as evidence that the Russians have established control over the rail railways because I, I can't imagine the movement of Russian soldiers along these three lines and not being attacked by the Ukrainian forces right in front of them. Obviously it's impossible. The only, the only case when it's possible is that uh, there is no Ukrainian positions in this area. So I, I'm saying that probably these railway railways are under Russian control, like 90% of that. But I believe that it's better to see uh, the geolocation and then we will improve because it's not just to add a um, red square in this area. We need to move somewhere the Ukrainian positions, let's say in Stepovo or to the north of chemical plant. I believe that today we're going to receive some updates and then we will adjust. And before the next video, I will adjust. We will see completely different picture and configuration of the front line before the evening uh, summary. 
Uh, furthermore, the Russians are saying that they start using the third generation of Geran drones. Uh, these uh, drones has the title of Italmas, and this is the uh, third generation. There was Geran, Geran third one, Geran two, and now there is like it's not like Geran three. It's Italmas, and it has its a uh, title by the name of Product Fifty Four. It's uh, lit, it, it's weight less. It has better speed. It uh, has better power, and so it's more powerful than Geran, probably twice as more. And the Russians started using this type of weapon massively. And this is a very big problem for the Ukrainians because they're using different engine and they sometimes are invisible for Ukrainian air defense. And this is something like the beginning of the next generation and the next era of uh, uh, drone strikes against drone kamikaze strikes against the Ukrainian positions all over the entire Ukraine. Uh, when talking about uh, Vremivka tactical bridgehead, we also got very interesting geolocation. The Russians finally published the video of counteroffensive operation uh, on the north of Priyutina. On this video, we can see how the Russians were using small groups, uh, like a few armored vehicles with the personnel under the cover of Russian tanks, attacked the Ukraine positions and the tree line on the north of Priyutina. We don't see the results of storming the trenches. The only thing we see is that the Russians managed to get very close to this area and to land infantry and then to turn back and step uh, step back without losses so as I understand as a result of these clashes that we can see on this video the russians managed to establish control over these three lines completely and currently this entire area is under complete russian control uh, obviously if we're going to see more proofs if the ukrainians are not able to um, launch counter offense we will update this map and we will show this territory in the future as you can see right now on the screen when talking about uh, Vremivka, uh, Robotina area, there are no changes underground, nothing special happened there. And when talking about uh, the Paro uh, Kherson area, the Russians took a decision to create an operational group. Uh, that um, the main purpose of this operational group is to counterattack every single discovered Ukrainian foothold on the Russian bank of the river. So the Russians are trying to optimize the quality and the quantity of soldiers, and they made the first step to prevent any attacks from the Ukrainian side in the future. I believe that this is like first very effective steps, and as I understand, the Russians are planning to reduce the risks in this area till minimum uh, within the next few months. And that's it for this short video. Military summary channel reminds you can them any violence in the world thank you for watching subscribe to my channel put your likes to my patreon and have a good day bye bye